coding made easy. So what's up everybody and welcome to your next Java Made Easy tutorial. And in this tutorial you're going to be learning about the last principle which is polymorphism. And um, polymorphism builds uh, upon, great, builds greatly upon inheritance. And uh, polymorphism means to take many different forms or take many different shapes. And we're going to... I'm not just going to explain to you how to do polymorphism. I'm going to be we're going to be creating a small program to see how polymorphism can ease our minds and and make our programs vastly shorter. So what I've done is that in our entity class, I just made a, a, a void attack, and in our player class, we're just going to override that attack. So if a player instance calls attack, it'll call this attack rather than the entity's attack. And I've done the exact same thing for the enemy class. But if we just make a generic entity, it will just say attack. That's basically all we've done. Now, let's, let's do a relatively simple program. So I'm telling you that we have four players playing the game. But we want to ask you if the player wants to, if the user wants to be a player or if they want to be an entity, if they want to be an enemy, right? How are you going to keep track of the players, uh, what, what the players are and what they are, whether they're player or enemy. So we're gonna make a small program to see kind of how we do it based on the knowledge we know. So we're just gonna make a char and we're just gonna say E type. So for the entity type, and we're just gonna say it's four. So we're gonna store which entity type they wanna be. So if they're an enemy or a player. And then we're gonna make a player array and we're gonna say four because maximum possibility there could be maximum four players and we're gonna make an enemy array and they could be maximum four players so we don't know if they're gonna choose if all users are gonna choose player if all users are gonna choose enemies we don't know if two users are gonna use players and two users are gonna choose enemies and yada 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 we really don't know so we gotta make it so that we put maximum four just in case and so what we're gonna do is we're just going to loop four times and we're gonna say system out print line enter one for player enter two for enemy simple and we're going to cr need to create a scanner don't forget to import it And so we're going to say input and we're going to say scanner next int. So we're going to say if input is equal to one, that means they want to be, they want to be a player. So all we're going to say is E type. So for the first player, E type I, sorry, the entity they want to be is a player. So we're going to say P and then we're going to say player, player I is equal to new player simple and we're going to say else so if they enter anything other than one we're going to say e type i is equal to e for enemy and we're going to say enemy i equals new enemy simple enough so if they say they want to be enemy they become an enemy enemy if they want to be a player they become a player and we did all this uh, just to specify which is which so we're going to create a little game loop and we're just going to make a boolean and we're going to say is running and we're going to say true so we're going to say while is running we're going to say enter the enter the user that wants to attack and we're just going to get our input and we're just going to say get or next int sorry so we're going to get the user we want to attack and so once we get our input we're going to say okay switch for our input sorry not that we're going to switch e type our input so if we say we want to say we put number zero so we want our first player to attack we're gonna say okay e type zero so if our say our first player entity they want to be a player so we're gonna switch that 
So we're going to say, okay, if E type, whatever the input is, if that is set to P, then we're going to say, okay, player input dot attack. Simple, and we're going to break, and then we're going to say case E, so if they said, if they said, if they chose enemy at the beginning, then we're going to say we want the enemy to attack because they chose en enemy. So simple enough. And we've done all this just to make sure that we specified, if, just to make sure we know that if they're a player or if they're an enemy. And so if we run this program, well, we'll run forever, but we can specify what we want them to be. So we say, okay, player one, we want them to be um, a player. Uh, player two, we want them to be an enemy. Player three, we want them to be an enemy. Let's move this down some more. And player four, we want them to be a player. So enter the user that you want to attack. So we want user zero. So we want user number one to attack. And it says arg, because number one was a player. We say number two, it says that, because they're an enemy. Number two, they're an enemy again. And if I say number three, it says arg, because they're a player. And we did all this, and it ran fine. It was fine, or whatever. But what if I told you there was an easy way in which we could go about this? Well, let's go back to our uh, entity, our entity class. So remember, as I told you in the last tutorial, that the way we do it is we say a player is an entity, an enemy is an entity, right? So we, they, they both extend each other, and they are both entities. Now, because whenever we inherit from, whenever we inherit from a from a, a parent class right we can all we can override methods that uh, we want to do something different with so see as as you can see with our attack method we said that the, the default attack would display the text attack but for a player we wanted to change that and same thing for an enemy and we could do that now Java has an annotation which uh, is called override so you put the at symbol then you put override and that makes sure that makes sure that you actually override it properly so for example say I misspelled it or something I would get an error it'll let you know that you didn't override it properly or let's say for example I got rid of this but I forgot to get rid of it in the player class the override method will let me know that something is not right it doesn't match a method name from the parent class and so putting the override annotation is a very good habit that you should practice it will save you a lot of time and a lot of trouble so we put that on both of them and so we've overrided both of these methods right there so they're they're all entities so how can we cannot specify wouldn't it be beneficial if you could also specify them as entities so let me get rid of this right here let me just get rid of all this oh, right here and just get rid of this in here And so we can agree that a player is an entity and an enemy is an entity. We get that, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to make an entity array and we're just going to call entities. And we're just going to say new entity and we're going to store four in there. So when we check for the input, we say, okay, if input is equal to one, then we're going to say, okay, entities i is equal to new player because a player is an entity. So even though the data type is entity, we can set it to it because they're the exact same thing. A player is an entity, right? So setting it, setting a player to an entity type will not give you an error. So you must be able to do the same thing for enemies as well so we say else new enemy so all of a sudden we've just minimized it we don't have to keep track of a player and enemies they're all different entities so we can store them all in one single array so now when we check to see which one actually wants to attack instead of us doing a switch statement like that 
all we have to do is just get the input and we say entities i entities input sorry dot attack and it's that simple so let's walk you through it so we created an integer entity array sorry and we said okay enter one for player enter two for enemy we enter number one the it says okay we want to set entities to a new player is a player an entity yes it is okay so that's fine if we enter number two it says is enemy an entity yes it is so we can store we can store any type anything that is an entity within this array and so when we loop through here we say we want to um, output what it is so let's just say that the first player say the first it's the first user said that they want to be a player so we'll say okay we say we want to output uh, entity zeros attack so it will say arg because entity zero has a player in there and that's essentially how it's going to run so let me just instead of me talking so much i think you guys will learn by example better so i'm going to say one for player the next two are going to be uh enemies and the last one's going to be a player so I'm, we're going to do the same thing as last time so enter the player we want to attack so we're going to put player zero and it says arg right just like in this player class right there and then we're going to say we want player number three it says arg because the last player is the last user is a player i'm going to put number two it's going to say this because the third user is an enemy and voila we've just minimized it so because they are all of the same type it makes it it makes programming a lot easier and we can utilize this in a lot of cool different ways so just like with our methods before when we to say test function so just like before when we could pass in players and we can say player p and yada 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 we can do the same thing so we can say entity we can just ask them to pass in the entity right there and pass an E and then we could say E dot attack so whatever entity we pass in there if we pass in the uh, the the player entity uh, if we pass in a player instance so let's just put player new player and that's all we're gonna do and then we just call test function and we put the player in there since the player is the entity, nothing goes wrong, and it's going to call the player class's attack. So let's run this just to see if it does that, and it says arg. So that is what polymorphism is. It is taking a different shape. It is saying that these are all entities, so the entity can form into whatever entity it wants to be. The entity can be a player if it wants to be. The entity can be an uh, enemy if it wants to be. It could just be a generic entity. Anything that is an entity entity it can transform into that and that is what polymorphism is so I know this video was long but I hope it uh, it was you learned a lot I hope you caught on to what polymorphism is and uh, that's it for this tutorial so I hope you enjoyed it don't forget to comment rate and subscribe don't forget to like my page on Facebook follow on Twitter and don't forget to sign up on my website that's it and bye for now